Welcome. I'm Julie Thompson, Executive Director of PAC TV, and today we're hosting a COVID-19 update from the town of Kingston. We will hold these forums every Tuesday and Friday at 10.30 a.m. Watch in Kingston on Comcast Channel 15 and Verizon Channel 42. Or watch online on our streaming channel by visiting pactv.org slash live. To ask questions during the forum, email them to kingstoninfo at pactv.org. Again, that's kingstoninfo at pactv.org. And I will pass those questions on to the participants today to answer them. For the forum replay schedule and additional Kingston meeting coverage, please visit pactv.org slash Kingston. Today's participants include Josh Warren, who's the chair of the Kingston Board of Selectmen, Paula Rossi Clapp, the director of Elder Affairs, Mike Slauson, the library tech, Mark Douglas, the fire chief, and remotely coming in by phone is Kathy Lenatra, our state representative. So without further ado, I'll turn this over to Josh Warren. Um, can, can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. Great. Um, well, I, I just wanted to, uh, to sort of introduce um, the, the update today. Um, let everybody know that efforts to respond and contain COVID-19 are rapidly changing. Um, but our priority is to, to continue to provide uh, continuity of services um, to residents, employees, and businesses in Kingston. Um, over the past several weeks, we've utilized the town's website, uh, www.kingstonmass.org. We've uh, issued mass mailings to our seniors. Um, we've utilized Blackboard Connect, which is the town's reverse 911 system. Um, we've used social media. We've uh, relied on 95.9 uh, FM WATD to um, uh, share news and, and issue public service announcements regarding uh, COVID-19. And now we've held three COVID-19 updates like this on PAC TV. Um, the town will continue to uh, reach residents through all of these mediums. And we, we hope that um, in doing so, the information that we're able to provide is helpful for those uh, in town who are, are looking for answers during these uncertain times. Um, I'm, I'm really excited to have uh, Mark, Paula, Mike, and Kathy on today um, to discuss some of what has changed since um, we last spoke to you all this past Tuesday. Um, and we'll, we'll start with Mark. Um, Mark, on Tuesday, the town of Kingston was made aware that, it's, uh, that, that we had our first confirmed case of COVID-19. Um, yesterday, we learned of our second and third cases. Um, and I'm hoping that you can explain to, to residents and viewers um, what tends to happen once a case is confirmed. Well, to, to jump back just a, a one step, um, the way we respond to these is the dispatcher will take the information, will respond to the call. We do use universal precautions, gloves, gowns, and, and the things that are necessary to protect our crews from, from the virus. They're then transported to the hospital. Uh, the hospital, through their infection control uh, officer and process, um, contacts us with potential exposures, then follow up by DPH if that exposure is confirmed. Uh, that's how we typically handle the the incident. Uh, as far as does it change anything from there on out, it does and it doesn't. Uh, what it simply does is we follow our employees as, as far as we need to in terms of uh, monitoring their health and so forth. We are keenly aware that this is going on, as, ev as everybody is, and we're taking precautions to protect our staff as well as protect the public. So to that end, the number of cases uh, will we'll stress the system a bit, but it will not um, cause us to take any actions that are extreme in terms of what we normally do um, to protect ourselves from, from viruses such as this. Sure, and, and um, yesterday you and I uh, spoke extensively um, with uh, Chief Splain, with Arthur Boyle, our, um, our health agent, um, just about what the, um, what, what the responsibility is of the town and, and what the town can actually do in terms of um, reporting out once these cases have been confirmed. Um, and I'm, I'm wondering if you can just speak to that. I know there were um, some residents who were um, upset to learn more specifics through uh, local news agencies uh, than they, they were able to learn from the town. Um, but there is good reason why the town doesn't disclose that information. Um, and I'm hoping you can just speak to that briefly. Absolutely. Uh, the town, the fire department, the EMS services throughout the state 
are restricted by certain laws and regulations relative to patient confidentiality. That said, the patients um, have that right not to have their medical information released. Uh, various people, the, the, they interpret the rules and the laws and, and stuff in various ways, but there is a small amount of people that, that cry out that we need to release every name and address and so forth of every patient we take. And that, that's simply forbidden by law. And, and that's where we are restricted, as well, frankly, we should be. The process that is used to report these cases through the hospitals, as I just described, then up through DPH and back down through the channels through the Board of Health is more than sufficient um, to keep our folks safe and frankly, the public. Uh, if you start releasing names and addresses and so forth, you're just simply going to create a pu public panic, if you will, that is simply unnecessary. Um, any information that needs to be released to the public is packaged in a, in a way that everyone can understand it. It creates the action steps that are needed to deal with the virus. And that's simply it. Um, releasing those types of things, not only is it illegal, it's simply inappropriate. Thank you for, um, for, for clearing that up. I, I hope that, um, you know, that that helps um, some folks at home really understand why uh, the, the town is not able to release uh, some of the details that they, they may you know, wish that we were uh, giving them. Um, as tests become more widely available, we've seen the number in Plymouth County uh, increase significantly over the last few days. Uh, yesterday, DPH announced that there were 138 cases in Plymouth County, uh, which was an increase from the previous day's count of 101. Um, how are you and the, uh, the others at the fire station preparing for um, uh, an increased demand on your services um, as testing becomes available and as these, these numbers do go up? What we're seeing slowly is, um, as you suggested, the numbers are going to go up because of the testing. We are prepared to the degree we can be. Um, everyone has been uh, made aware, trained, uh, we have PPE um, stocked, um, not as much as we'd like. That That's absolutely clear. I think we've seen that throughout the state. There's a lack of personal protective equipment. Here is no exception. Uh, so it's used sparingly, but appropriately. Um, those are the demands that we're most concerned about right now is, is on the PPE. Our folks um, are doing a great job of protecting ourselves, um, the patients, um, the public where they need to. Uh, but at some point, if these uh, these cases, the amount of cases increases exponentially, we're going to run out of PPE. And I, I think um, the the governor made that very clear in his, his conference news conference yesterday that he's equally as frustrated. That being said, we do have plans in place um, if we do have folks that become infected, so that we rearrange the personnel and the shift staffing so that we can cover the calls. Uh, we additionally have a mutual aid agreement in place that will assist in doing that. Great. And, and uh, Deputy Chief Hatch on Tuesday uh, spoke briefly about uh, mutual aid. And I'm wondering, can you just fill us in on some of the conversations that you've been having um, with surrounding communities uh, to ensure that residents will have um, the services necessary uh, should this put a, a greater strain on your department? Sure. Uh, the Plymouth County Fire Chiefs have had several discussions related to um, how we cover each other under the existing mutual aid agreements if we do end up having uh, staff that gets ill. So the addition, the, uh, excuse me, the standing mutual aid agreements um, are very simple. When you call for help from another community, they provide it. Uh, so what you do is you, you regionalize a little bit. You know, if we have 10 people, that's a crazy number, but if we have 10 people that are ill and we only have two people working a shift and we get a second or third call, you simply rely on that mutual aid system. You call for what you need for resources and it's provided by another town. Uh, the word mutual is very important. Uh, we provide to them equally as, as they provide to us in situations like this. We had a fire yesterday. I used several mutual aid communities um, for the, the incident. Uh, they, you use them as, as long as you need them and then send them home as quickly as you can. So we're going to use that same type of system relative to the coronavirus. Thank you. Um, and, and just one last question for you, um, unless Julie's uh, seen any come in uh, via email. Again, the email address for anybody that wants to submit questions is kingstoninfo at pactv.org. Um, just one last question for you, Mark. Um, a term that keeps getting uh, used during this phase of the pandemic is community spread. Um, my understanding is that refers to people uh, being infected with the virus in an area 
um, not necessarily knowing where, when, or how um, they were infected. Um, according to the CDC website, they, they say that community spreads occurring in the acceleration phase of the pandemic, um, and that the duration and severity uh, of that phase really relies on the, uh, the public health response. Um, given that COVID-19 and viruses like it spread so easily and sustainably, um, can you just speak to why it's imperative that residents adhere to social distancing and um, DPH's recent uh, stay-at-home advisory? Absolutely. Uh, community spread is, is a big deal. It's very difficult to, to trace and follow the infection as it spreads. It's just that. It's spread throughout the community with contact of objects or person to person. So that being said, if you look at the CDC guidelines, they're suggesting, as Josh, Josh said, distancing, cleaning surfaces, and so forth. And that's all to keep the virus from spreading person to person. So the more that we do that, the more that we adhere to the guidelines, uh, you'll avoid uh, spreading that virus. And at some point, when you, uh, when you do that successfully, you'll see that the virus will start to die off. It will stop being spread from person to person. Uh, so that's extremely important that we follow the guidelines that the healthcare professionals are publishing. Great. Uh, Mark, I, I, I really appreciate you uh, taking the time. And, and if you can, um, you know, remain on the call just in case questions do come in for you, that'd be great. Um, Paula, I'm going to direct the next question to you. Um, as, as I think at this point, everybody knows your team is continuing to provide services to Kingston's senior population. Um, I'm on phone calls with you, you know, five, six times a day, it seems like, and you're, you're just constantly moving. Um, not only are you supporting the seniors, you're um, motivating your staff, um, and, and I just would love for you to recap what this week at the COA looked like for you and your team. So it was very busy, and, and um, my staff's been amazing, and we've all jumped in when needed. Um, we No day has been the same, and uh, I think that uh, because we're such a strong team and everyone helps out, we're, we're making sure we're t taking care of each other as well to make sure that we don't get burned out. So uh, we're pacing ourselves, but the phone calls are coming in at a moderate pace, but we're reaching out to a lot of people in different ways, as you said, in the different media formats. So I believe that we have been um, very good uh, at, at getting out there and um, contacting as many seniors as possible. Great. And, and I know um, a new uh, program uh, or a new opportunity that you uh, initiated this week was in collaboration with a Kingston resident who owns a restaurant in Norwell. Um, and it was an effort to, to deliver meals to seniors. I'm wondering if you can tell us a little bit about that. Yes, that was really exciting. So um, Elaine Fiore has, was approached by a neighbor who owns uh, Little Carmen's Restaurant in Norwell, and she wanted Nikki um, DeGiusti, I think I'll butcher her last name, I don't mean to, but uh, Little Carmen's in Norwell, and they wanted to donate some special uh, lunch meals for the seniors. So Elaine approached me, and uh, we were able to coordinate, and we put out many calls, uh, deciding on, you know, we tried to get to the most vulnerable first, and we were able to deliver last uh, this Wednesday 62 uh, meals to seniors in addition to the Meals on Wheels that went out in the morning. So well, 88 uh, seniors received meals on Wednesday, thanks to a lot, in part by uh, Little Carmen's donation. It's fantastic, and I, I understand they're queued up for next week as well? They are. So we will be reaching out again and uh, on Wednesday to do another special delivery in addition to the Meals on Wheels program. And we're hoping to do a special delivery once a week if we can as the weeks progress. Fantastic. And, and uh, I take it that Meals on Wheels is still going strong? So Meals on Wheels, uh, this week alone, we had... Uh, 35 individual people that received meals um, from the Old Colony Elder Services Meals on Wheels program. A total of 186 meals went out to these 35 individuals to help get them through the week and the weekend. Uh, we did drop uh, some numbers because family was taking care of, of the participants in the program. So what I'm hoping today is to reach out to more seniors 
as time goes on, if you just need a little help, this Old Colony Elder Services Meals on Wheels program is wonderful. You receive uh, one meal a day. It can be refrigerated or uh, frozen for later. Uh, you can receive uh, anywhere up to seven meals a week, get you through the whole week. It's, um, I did bring a little visual. It's like having a, a TV, TV dinner, but it's made fresh every single day. So they're receiving a fresh meal and uh, you can doctor it up with your spices and herbs. Um, and um, also you are provided by joining the program. They also provide you with coal pack, which is a three day supply um, for just in case. But I really encourage the seniors, even if this is temporary, just to get you through the hurdle, to contact Old Colony Elder Services. We have their number on our website. You can call the center and we'll give you the phone number. And um, just look into the program. I think it's a wonderful, wonderful program to have for them. Thank you. Um, and you mentioned on Tuesday's COVID-19 update um, that we had the emergency preparedness survey uh, linked to the town website. Again, that's uh, www.kingstonmass.org. Um, and that's a survey for seniors and disabled residents who may need additional support um, during snowstorms, hurricanes, or, or obviously um, events like this. Can you just run us through that again? So if anybody missed Tuesday's um, update, they'll uh, receive that information. So the form is located uh, both on the COA webpage and the town, the front of the town's webpage. Um, and we can also, you, you can download it and print it out and send it in. You can call the center. Uh, you can email me and I can reach back out to you to get you on this form. And it just, um, it's very confidential, but it's a way for us to be able to reach out to you first thing if any of the any events like this, such as these happen. Um, it also marks off if you have a, a pet you're worried about. Um, so it's just a way of us keeping the documentation so we have that available to go to you first um, for any any issues. Great, thank you. Um, and and just one last question for you, Paula. Um, if there are seniors at home and they're watching and they haven't yet reached out to the COA uh, to register for services, to um, request um, you know, the delivery of meals through Meals on Wheels, um, if there's any apprehension, if there's any um, trepidation from them, uh, what would you tell them to, to encourage them to reach out and, um, and, and seek support from the COA? Um, I, I really really encourage them to make the phone call in just to talk to us and meet us. Um, eventually, we'll all meet in person. I actually had a really uh, fun phone call yesterday from someone that had received our letter. She had just moved in town recently and was getting to know her neighbors, but had never been to the senior center. But after receiving the letter, she decided to call just to, to touch base. And in the course of the conversation, we were having a great time getting to know each other and, and what she liked to do and, and uh, how the senior center could help her, whether it's now or in the future. And then at the end, uh, when I'm getting all her data, that I put in, um, it turned out we had the same exact birthday. So it, that was pretty, pretty cool. And uh, you don't get that every day. And what are the odds of that? But so um, I made a new friend. And um, I think they can make new friends by calling in. We have, we have Dottie, Darlene, um, Holly, we have everybody here is is ready to just have a conversation with people and explain what we can do for you. Great, thank you. Um, I, uh, I I really appreciate you again taking the time to be with us today. Um, I know <laughs> Kathy may have to run, so um, I'm just gonna to jump over to her. I, I understand that a few questions have come in for her. Um, so Kathy, if you're if you're there on the phone, um, I think Julie may relay a couple of questions to you. Sure, thank you. Hi, Kathleen. Hi, um, Julie. I know you'll have some other updates, but just a couple of um, questions that we've gotten, not just from Kingston, but all the towns, is how do employees figure out the whole unemployment realm? How do employers fill it up, figure it out? And will it change based on what is being done nationally uh, and the, um, the, uh, the legislation that right now is going to be voted on today? Okay. So what they've done is they've they've started virtual town halls, which are extremely helpful. I was on one last Friday, um, and they have to sign up for those. And I did not give you this website, but I'm going to say it slowly. 
It is mass.gov forward slash unemployment forward slash town hall. So if you sign up for that, it will go through it step by step for you and it's very helpful. Otherwise, the number, the calls that they're getting are astronomical. So you do need to be patient when you call. I, I can't stress that enough. They have upped their call people to 300 and next week we're thinking they'll have 400 people answering the phone. So it will get a little better, but you do have to be patient. Okay, thank you. And did you have any further updates for the town of Kingston from your perspective? I do. I, I actually just got an update. So the state taxes, when you file for state taxes, will now match the federal taxes. So the, uh, the town now it will be July. Let me look. It's um, July 15th is your tax date now. And there's no special forms needed. And it matches the federal extension. So you just file right then. July 15th is the date now. Excellent. Anything else, uh, Kingston specific, as far as how much um, aid each of the towns, not only Kingston, but you represent a number of towns, will be getting, or is that down the road? That's down the road. But I do would like to mention that the Department of Public Utilities has granted the request to prohibit utility companies from shutting off gas, electric, and water utility services to any customers now. So it's not just residents. It also includes our small businesses and our industrial commercial buildings. So I think that will be a little bit helpful. There will be a lot coming on today. So Governor Baker has another press conference today at 11, which I need to be available for. Um, and after that, I'll have another update with Secretary Scudder as we talk to her after the press conference. So there will be much more to come. Um, you can check out the updates on my webpage, State Rep. Captain Lenatra Facebook. So I will have more updates. I don't know if you're going to mention if you want to receive updates by text. You can text COVID MA to 888-777. So that way you'll be receiving updates on by text. Okay. Um, and I didn't know if Mark wanted to mention this, but police and fire are now allowing retired and pension former officers to come back too. That's one of the things that will help with our local departments. And hospitals are doing the same with their retired providers. That's excellent. Josh, did you have any more questions for Kathleen before she, I know she does have to, to go off onto other calls at this time. No, I just wanted to thank Kathy for taking the time to, um, to, to be with us today and also to thank Kathy. Um, you know, she's, she's another person who is constantly um, communicating with Kingston's officials on, on what's going on at the state level. Um, I certainly have appreciated the guidance that we've received from the Baker Polito administration and, and also from Kathy. Um, and I, I uh, encourage her to uh, keep up the good work because uh, we're, we're all um, seeing it and reaping the benefits. So, uh, Kathy, thank you again. Oh, it was very kind of you, Josh. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Kathleen. Great. So, Julie, I just ask that if, um, if additional questions uh, do come in, please feel free to, to just chime in. Um, but I'm going to uh, turn it over to Mike Slauson. Uh, who's joining us today. Uh, he's, he's a library tech, um, and Mike is uh, here to tell us about some of the offerings that the Kingston Public Library has, even though they've been closed to the public uh, since Monday, March 16th. Um, there's there's a, a lot of resources that are available to residents uh, through the library's website. Um, with, with Governor Baker's um, announcement that school uh, closings would be extended by a month, and with the weekend approaching, I thought that it would be a, a good time to invite Mike on and um, just let folks know how they can use their library card to, um, to entertain themselves, to entertain their children um, during, uh, during the next several weeks. Um, so Mike, with that, um, I'm wondering, can, can you uh, start off with a, a pretty basic question uh, that I've received from folks? Um, is it possible to, uh, to get a library card online uh, now that the, the library, again, um, has closed its physical location? Hi, Josh, uh, thank you for having me. And uh, yes, it is possible for uh, uh, residents to open a library card online. Normally, they'd ha they would have to come in, uh, but because of the COVID-19 crisis, we've temporarily changed that. Uh, so people can apply for a library card online. And I'm gonna try to share my screen with you here and uh, show people at home what they can do. If they go to our website, 
and you'll notice uh, it looks a, it looks a little different than it used to. Uh, we, we've updated it uh, since since we've been closed. Uh, right on the front here, you'll see a link that says "Open a card and use it from home." So if you click on that, whoops. Sorry, I just uh, I lost my window here. I'm bringing it back. All right, there we go. So uh, if you look down to where it says open a library card and use it from home, you click on there and uh, you'll see a link right here where it says click here to open a library card. You click on that link, it will bring you to a form that you can fill out and you can uh, submit it. And we will get back to you uh, quickly by email with a library card and a PIN number. We have staff that are working from home, working really hard from home, uh, and they're on top of this. So um, if you need a library card, click the link, fill out the form, and uh, you can get one quick. Great, thank you for, uh, for sharing that. Now, um, just a, a really quick question. Um, my, my wife, as you know, is a library trustee, so I'm in big trouble if I ever have late fees here. Um, but I'm just wondering if, if late fees have been suspended uh, given that um, the, the physical location has been closed. Yes, late fees are suspended. So, uh, so if anyone has, has something out that they're worried about returning, don't worry about it right now. Um, if, if there's an issue, give us a call, send us an email. We will work with you to figure it out. Thank you. Um, and, and again, something that I, I keep hearing from uh, residents uh, with young children, um, the, the longer we go without uh, child care services, the longer we go without uh, schools being in session, um, folks are really you know, scratching their head trying to figure out how to entertain their kids, especially um, when play dates and, and sports aren't an option. Um, can you just run us through some of the offerings for, uh, for kids and for teens that exist through the, uh, the KPL's website? Yeah, we, we've got a lot of stuff, uh, a lot of stuff for kids and teens on, or digital resources for kids and teens on the website. Um, hopefully uh, they can they can keep up with learning, uh, but also it'll give them something to uh, to keep them entertained while they're home. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to screen share with you again real quick here. And uh, if you go back to our our home page and if you click on again, open a card and use it from home. You'll see the, the link to the card we talked about that. But then if you scroll down, uh, you'll see some of the options that, uh, that you can uh, choose to use from home. And if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see uh, for kids here. Uh, and we, we, there, there's a couple different things uh, to look at. There's overdrive for kids and teens, and that's eBooks and audiobooks uh, mainly. Um, and also we have uh, our, our staff is working from home and they're really working on uh, updating our our uh, ebooks and audiobooks to make sure we have uh, books that people want and uh, make sure we have lots of things available uh, for, for our patrons. Uh, there's also uh, from Scholastic, there's Book Flicks and True Flicks, uh, which are uh, some, some great services. Uh, Book Flicks is a uh, interactive storybooks for kids uh, K through three. And then you also have True Flicks, which is a great resource for nonfiction books uh, for, for kids as well. And then finally, there's uh, Tumble Books, which is a, a relatively new service, and that's ebooks for kids. Uh, there's comics, uh, there's language learning, uh, there's read-alongs, and, and a lot more. A lot more. Um, and there's also uh, a, a, some things I'll talk about in in a, in a minute. Uh, there's more kids features as well. Thank you. Um, I, I know one of the newest offerings through the website is a, um, a service called Canopy, K-A-N-O-P-Y. Um, what can you tell us about that? Uh, so yes, Canopy is a, is a brand new service we, we just put up uh, a couple days ago and it's a video streaming service uh, and it's focused on independent films and documentaries. And I'm uh, really, really impressed so far with, uh, with what I've seen with it. And, and I'll show you again uh, real quick here on our uh, screen sharing, you can access Canopy uh, right from the front page. So you'll notice it says new streaming service Canopy. Click on that. And then you can log in with your library card right here. So this this is what it looks like once, once you're logged in. You get 10 checkouts a month. 
Um, there are a ton of, of options options to choose from. Uh, I was I was really happy. I'm a, I'm a big fan of of the PBS Nova series. I'm sure there are other people out there who are as well. Uh, they I think they have 40 45 episodes of Nova on there. There's also the Great Courses, which I know people are are fans of as well. So like I said, you get 10 checkouts a month. But also, what's great about this is that there's a, a kids feature too. So if you click on Go to Canopy Kids up in the top here, uh, you'll get a whole bunch of, uh, of videos uh, to choose from for kids to watch. And the great part about the kids feature is that it's unlimited. So for the, the regular videos, you get 10 a month, but for the kids, you can watch as many as you'd like. Great, and, and uh, just to reiterate, this is, uh, all, all of these services are, are totally free for anyone who has a Kingston Public Library card. <laughs> yes, that's right. So uh, if you if you have a library card, uh, just have your card in front of you when you are uh, logging into these these services, and uh, you'll have no problem. If you do have a problem with your card, just email us. Um, if you uh, go to the contact us uh, on the website, and I, I can show you that uh, in in a minute, or give us a call, and uh, we'll we'll get the voicemail, and we can help you out. Great, um, and and there's a number of other platforms, um, without going into too much detail, uh, that allow residents to stream movies, um, audiobooks, ebooks, magazines, uh, newspapers. Um, can you just mention those briefly so folks know uh, what is available? Yeah, sure, and uh, and I'll, I'll I'll show them uh, where where they can find it here. Uh, once again, right on that, open a card and use it from home. And scroll down a little bit. We got uh, uh, Hoopla is great for movies and, and eBooks. Uh, Overdrive and Libby, another great one for eBooks, audiobooks. Uh, Canopy, which we talked about. Uh, there's also uh, uh, access to local and national newspapers. So if you click on the newspapers link here, uh, you can get access to local news like the, the Patriot Ledger and the Old Colony Memorial. But you can also get access to the New York Times online. Uh, which is which is nice to have as well. And then if you want to see all of our digital collections, because we have a lot, there's there's way too many to cover in uh, in this short time. But if you click right here on view all of our digital collections, you can uh, you can browse through here and uh, and see everything that we've got. Great, and I, I'm glad that you mentioned um, you know that those newspapers are available. I think we're we're certainly at a point in time where uh, residents, not just in Kingston, are hungry for information. Um, so it's great that uh, you know they're they're able to access those uh, through through the KPL's website. Josh, I have some questions coming through. Sure. Okay, um, and they're they're more for um, for Josh, I think, um, and possibly uh, for the um, school department. Um, a resident asked, what information can you tell us about what schools in Kingston are doing to support students both academically and emotionally, and are they providing assistance such as free lunches to students in need? Um, sure, I can certainly speak to the, uh, the second half of that. Um, uh, Mark uh, Douglas, who's also on today's uh, video call with us, uh, he and I um, had been in a number of conversations with members of the school committee uh, two weeks ago. Um, while they were trying to launch their grab-and-go lunch program. Um, that uh, is, is up and running. Um, I believe they've been doing it since this past Friday. Um, and that is a, a, a program that's available to students in the district who qualify for um, free or reduced lunches. I believe there's three different days. Um, there's pickup locations in each community um, for the Silver Lake District. And um, if if uh, residents go to, um, I just want to make sure I get the web address correct. It is linked on the town website. Um, I just want to make sure I'm giving the right address for the schools. Um, if they head over to the school's website, uh, there's more information. Um, if you have not enrolled in the grab and go program, uh, but you do qualify, um, you can visit uh, SLRSD, Silver Lake Regional School District, um, .org. And there's information there right on the front page um, regarding how to get in touch with the food service director. Um, there's a click here link that will take you uh, right to information on the grab and go program. Um, in regards to continued learning, um, you know, while schools are out, I'm not sure what the schools are doing. Um, but again, if you go right to the front page at slrsd.org, um, there's, uh, there's a bright red important announcement section 
um, with a note from the superintendent. Um, and there's hopefully that can help answer questions. Um, it would be great um, in, in the coming weeks if we can get a representative from the school committee to come on to answer those questions. Um, and I'll certainly reach out to them today to see if it would be possible to have one of them join us in an upcoming update on PAC TV. Yeah, Josh, that was um, a couple other um, people have have wrote, written in and said they, they really would like to see some representatives from the school on your updates. Um, also, please keep in mind to this email address that we've set up, kingstoninfo at pactv.org, is always open. So you can, if you have a question that you come up with and you think of it, please do send it in and we will forward it to the uh, appropriate person in the town and then we'll make sure it's answered on the next forum that's done. And again, Kingston forums will be done on Tuesdays and on Fridays um, here at PAC TV at 1030. Back to you, Josh. Great. Uh, Julie, thank you for that. Um, I, I just had one more question for Mike um, before we wind things down. Mike, are there any additional resources that you'd like to recommend to residents? Uh, yeah, so the one thing I, I wanted to mention, uh, uh, or a couple things. Uh, first off, uh, if you are a Massachusetts resident, you can get a Boston Public Library card, an e-card for free, and you can use their resources online. So if you head to bpl.org, uh, you can open up an, an e-card there. And then I would also encourage people to keep checking back on, on the website, uh, because we're going to be updating it with, uh, with new free resources that we think will be helpful to the residents of Kingston. So, uh, so check back. Um, and then just before I go, I, I thought it would be good. Uh, I'm just gonna share my screen one more time here because we, uh, one of our staff members has really worked hard on, uh, on sort of aggregating a lot of this uh, information from local and national sources. If you look over on our website right here in the COVID-19 information, there's links to, to the town of Kingston, the Council on Aging, uh, the CDC, World Health Organization, and also a, um, a, a, a Facebook feed uh, from uh, those various organizations as well. Uh, so if, if you're looking for information, uh, it's a good place to start. Great. Thank you, Mike. Um, I'm not sure if anybody on the call has anything else that they, they um, want to mention before we wrap. Um, Paula, Mark, or Mike? No? I have one, well, more, uh, I have one more question for you, um, Josh. Sure. Um, there's a number of in, in the forums that we're having for other towns also, we're, we've had like Chamber of Commerce or Business Association members on. Um, we've had uh, food pantries uh, people on, uh, religious leaders, um, psychologists. So if, if, if people in your town would like to see a representative of any kind of group or organization, I assume they will, they will email you and ask if they can be part of the forums in the future? Uh, that certainly works for me. Uh, we, we've tried to um, bring on folks in town who are um, able to provide information that uh, will help the community through um, the COVID-19 pandemic. So certainly if um, there's an organization in town, I, I know we spoke with um, uh, Eric Greer from uh, Restoration Community Church a few days ago uh, regarding their food pantry and some of the needs there, um, but also some of the services that they provide. So um, if there are folks in the community uh, who, who um, uh, would like to uh, have a little bit more input on these updates, uh, please email. Um, can, can they just email the info or Kingston info at PACTV.org? Absolutely. And you guys can forward those along to me and we'll just keep it easy. Absolutely. Great. Thank you. Um, well, if, if that's it from um, Mark, Paula, and Mike, I just want to remind everybody who's watching. Um, at the top of the show, Mark spoke about um, uh, how quickly uh, this can spread. Um, we, we discussed the increase in numbers um, for Plymouth County and for Kingston. So I, I just want to leave this with everybody. Um, this, again, is a, a very crucial time for infection control, uh, maintaining social distancing, limiting exposure to others, um, avoiding crowded places, and vigilant hand washing. Um, are vital steps in slowing the spread of COVID-19. So I'd certainly encourage everybody to continue to do those things. Um, continue to visit the Town of Kingston's website, uh, www.kingstonmass.org. Uh, that site is updated daily, um, and, and those updates are, are being brought to you uh, by um, the clerk's office, and they've just been uh, wonderful in, in helping us keep that up to date. Um, so please visit the website. Uh, it's being updated every single day. And um, we'll continue to get as much information out to residents as possible. 
Thank you, Josh. Thank you so much. And thank you all for joining us today here at PAC TV. We will again be having COVID-19 updates from the town of Kingston every Tuesday and Friday morning at 1030 a.m. live on your Kingston channels and live on PAC TV at pactv.org slash live. If you want to see replays of anything to do with the town of Kingston that we've covered, including meetings, um, go to pactv.org slash Kingston. Uh, we thank you all so much for joining us today. Please stay safe, follow the instructions, social distancing, and keep the faith. We're all in this together. Thank you.